Doctors of Reddit, what is the most weird thing a patient has tried to convince you about? Pediatrician here, on mobile, English is not my first language etc. When I was in my residency we had a little girl, 7 or 8 years old, who was admitted for a supposed psychiatric breakout. She was on antipsychotic drugs as outpatient. The mother said that she had a lot of psychiatric trays and conduct CTC, which we found odd because she was a quiet and sweet child. We started weaning her off the medication and she was the sweetest child imaginable. Turns out the mother had been making up the symptoms, even managed to fool mental health professionals before we met the patient. Subsequently things got judicialized, they lost custody and last time we heard of her the girl was doing well. This is a condition called medical abuse by proxy formerly known as Munchausen syndrome, where basically the people who have it crave the attention the fabricated disease gives them. Oh wow, as an adult who takes an antipsychotic and has trouble with the side effects I cannot image how awful it must have been for that little girl. She must have felt so lost with everyone telling her she was ill and not knowing why. I was an EMT not a doctor but, we got a call for a woman who felt dizzy and weak. This was in the middle of the summer. She had horses she cared for and spent all day out in the field. She was severely dehydrated and we asked her how much water she had drank so far that day. She said none, but she had 6 cups of coffee. This was around 12 1 pm. We tried to explain to her why she needs to drink water but she wouldn't listen. She said she only likes to drink black coffee. She kept trying to blame her feeling weak and dizzy on some BBQ she had eaten. This went on for about 15-20 minutes. In that time she drank half a glass of water. We got an AMA signature from her and left since she didn't want to go to the hospital and there was nothing else we could do. It became a running joke at the squad station. If anyone ever felt sick we would blame it on BBQ. It's still shocking to me how many people refuse to drink water. My brother works at a lumber mill and says that he's never seen two thirds of his co-workers drink anything other than soda. They also complain about how crappy they feel on a regular basis. Emergency department doctor here. I once had a young male patient walk in, after sitting comfortably in the waiting room for over an hour, with no obvious injuries but complaining of severe leg pain that just started for no reason. He then told me that he was allergic to everything except IV morphine and ketamine. My eyebrows obviously went up because he spent the next 5 minutes desperately trying to convince me about these allergies before giving up and walking out of the department, with no pain whatsoever. Later found out that he's tried this in multiple nearby departments. We would have those patients come in and after some appearance of thoughtful consideration, we'd tell them we'd give them a powerful painkiller called Dolabid. We would intentionally mispronounce it to rhyme with Dilaudid. After an hour, these people would look like they were higher than a kite. Dilaudid is a powerful narcotic. Dolabid is an NSA idea like Advil. I am not a doctor but have a friend who is an emergency medicine doctor. Hopefully I can do this story right because it is absolutely hilarious. So my friend had only a few hours left in his shift when a young man came in with his older mother or grandmother. He came in complaining he had something up his bum and could not get it out. My friend finally got him to answer what it was and it was a summer sausage his mother got for Christmas. He gives him some pain meds and begins to try and remove it. He tried with one hand but he couldn't get his fingers around it and kept on sliding further up his anus. Then he tried using two hands and was trying to receive this sausage like a quarterback would from a center. He said the whole time the dude was moaning and couldn't tell if he was enjoying it or was in pain. The whole time the sausage keeps sliding out of his hands and further up this guy's butt when the nurse with him starts yelling gloves. My friend had his hands so deep in this dude's butt he was about to go past the point his gloves cover his hands. He then decides to use forceps you'd use for retrieving objects out of someone's throat. He finally gets a hold of it from the front of the sausage and finally pulled it out. My friend was so relieved he could finally be done with this nightmare until he looks down and red fluid is leaking out of this man's butt. He assumed he must have punctured his rectum but here if you leave a summer sausage in your butt that has a red casing for hours it basically makes a gravy of disgustingness. His relief was already there for him and he finished up with the sausage man and left. He later received pictures from nurses with the sausage wrapped like a baby held by the nurses there with a weight and everything and for several years after that would receive them in the mail or find them on his desk. That's the worst thing I've read all day. Not a doctor, 
But I work in an emergency room as a scribe so I follow doctors around. One day, an ambulance brought this guy in straight from dialysis because he had became super mentally altered. He was just swaying his head back and forth and would only answer yes to every question. What year is it yes? After a couple hours, his wife showed up, and his toxicology screened results were ready some time after that. Lou and behold, he was on C. The doc asked the wife to leave the room and confronted him about the results. Guess what? He snapped out of his altered state and immediately tried to convince the doc to lie to his wife about the sea. I've never seen someone beg like this before, especially after hours of only saying yes. The doctor essentially said tough crap, and that she wouldn't lie for somebody that wasted hours of her time. Another one. We had a patient in the air being detained by the police. The problem was the patient was unresponsive. The attending walked over, picked up the patient's limp arm and held the hand over the patient's face and dropped it. His hand completely missed his face and fell to the bed beside him. A truly unconscious patient will not protect their face. He was immediately discharged to police custody and he walked out on his own. That they are allergic to every oral formulation of pain medication. That the natural treatment they just read about online while waiting to see me is better than anything I might offer. I can only do nasal pain medication, proceeds to do a fat bong rip. A long time ago, I was convinced that tiny, bluish black parasites were feeding and living on my skin. I collected these buggers in a small jar, took them with me to the doctor, the doctor looked at them for half a second and told me it was lint. Okay that made me laugh. For once the tiny bugs living on my skin were not psychosis. Dentist here. A patient once tried to convince me that he was being hunted by government agencies because of the information he had acquired over the years. That was placing a negative energy around and within himself which was causing his teeth to rot. This wasn't some crappy dental office either. It was in one of the most affluent neighborhoods of Chicago. Sounds like your patient was schizophrenic. Not a doctor but worked in an as part of the initial treatment team. Patient had taken a pair of wired iPhone earbuds and stuck the plug end into his urethra all the way up to where the cord splits into two wires for each earpiece. Said he passed out at a party, woke up to find it there and that his friends had done it to him while he was passed out. They couldn't be pulled out, had to have surgery to remove it. Why? What happens when you put those same headphones in your pocket and walk around for hour? they get tangled up to holy heck. The doctor I was with had seen this same guy a few weeks prior for the same thing but with a wire coat hanger. We managed to get him an appointment with a mental health professional shortly after. Had a friend who was an x-ray tech. She would have all the stories of how to position folk in their coat hangers. Not a doctor but when I was in the waiting room of the air. This elderly woman tried to convince the front desk that she broke two three ribs. She kept laughing and chuckling with the doctors while talking to the doctors. I was in more pain with suspected appendicitis than she was. Safe to say she was fine and was discharged within two hours. Oh god, I broke four ribs about a year ago. Fell and landed hard on my left side on concrete steps. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I couldn't have laughed if Stephen Fry had shown up in person. Getting into and out of the car was almost impossible and left my shaking, sweating and crying. It was awful. My wife just spent a year as a PA at an urgent care in an undereducated area. The amount of stories she has are in the thousands. One of my favorites is, I can't have covered. Holds up taco bell bag. I just ate all these tacos. I don't know anyone with COVID that can eat all these tacos. Also, my daughter's friend's mom called me and told me her daughter has chlamydia and that everyone her daughter has been with needs to be told. So I'm brining in my daughter because they were in the same car together. My wife had to explain to him how STDs work. Lastly, I have the sugars. That's it. From now on I'm not drinking no more soda. From now on it's only Gatorade that was a response to being told he has diabetes. The sugars. Love it. My Alabama grandma used to say this all the time. It's why I call trembling. The shaky shakes as a full on adult. Not a doctor but an old co-worker of mine was a drug addict and cut his forearm open on a chomp saw. He tried to convince everyone before he got pumped full of drugs by the empts. That the top of the saw was broken off. It wasn't. And he was throwing wood over the top of it. He wasn't. And caught his forearm on top. 
Chomp saw, new favorite tool. A lady was trying to convince me she was having a stroke because she couldn't move her right arm. The only problem was that she demonstrated this by repeatedly shaking her right arm in my face saying see, I can't move it. I work for an attorney and we had a client come in once telling us he had paralysis of his left arm and leg as a result of the car accident he was in. He walked in on his own and spent the entire conversation flinging his arms around gesturing with every word. About once a year the same person, from a different continent, emails my team claiming that exposure to bat droppings has left her with intense diarrhea, spontaneous orgasms and an allergy to pears. Not a doc, just kinda related. I had a patient try to convince me that he occasionally grew feathers from his head. I asked him if he had a down pillow or comforter. He said yes, but didn't get the correlation. Anesthesiology interventional pain specialist here. When I was a resident, my attending used to prescribe opioids but back then, patients needed to sign prescription contracts and get regular urine drug testing done at the office. One lady showed up for a scheduled urine drug screen wearing an adult diaper nonchalantly acting like she lost control of her bowels and didn't seek any medical intervention, clearly in an effort to not give a sample, just casually wearing a diaper, upon further questioning, even challenged us to check her diaper for excrement which she assured us she was depositing in her diaper during the entire encounter. We referred her emergently to the aforegoing urgent neurosurgical eval because loss of bowel and bladder control could be a huge deal and indicate major spine injury. She declined and walked to the corner bus stop with a diaper full of crap and pee. Patient tried to convince me with very strong conviction, in full sentences of perfect English that she didn't speak any English. She was convinced she was speaking a dead language that only her, me, and God could understand. I knew this comment section would be filled with stories about people shoving items in their holes. I came here to read what items they are and imagine how they did it. I too came here for the guess what's in my butthole stories. They're always hilarious in one way or another. So the patient is me in this case. Last week as I was getting a dog toy from under the bed my dog jumped off right as I was picking my head up. She landed with her paws on the back of my head and her claw sliced the back of my ear and tore open my earlobe. This created a pretty nasty laceration. I went to the ear and needed a number of stitches. It should have been simple except no one believed me. Two doctors and two nurse practitioners weren't convinced that this is how I received the injury. Even my dad was less than fully convinced at first. It truly was just a freak accident. Wrong place wrong time. Still, nobody believed me. Psychologist here. I work psychiatric inpatient. So you can imagine the gamut of things patients try to convince me of daily. My personal favorites have been that they are pregnant with 99 fish babies. That they are actually a supreme court judge and king of Jupiter. And that there are angels in their urine sample so they need to do another one. I have so many more. But those are the most recent ones that come to mind. I'm posting on here a second time because more examples are coming to mind. Every patient ever has the most severe form of whatever diagnosis. The doctor said it's the worst fracture he's ever seen. I have end stage fibromyalgia. I almost died from my pneumonia that was treated as an outpatient with antibiotics and no oxygen. Always have to tread carefully with how approach those subjects cause people will defend it to the death. Have a friend that's an OBGYN. She once had a patient claim that they were pregnant with a crypto pregnancy which is apparently when people are convinced they are pregnant based on how they feel, I guess, despite all tests showing they are not in fact pregnant. It will probably not shock you that the patient had been through several doctors. Oh man there's so much of that on obscure internet message boards. I went down the rabbit hole one day and found a crypto pregnancy support group. It was really crazy but sad at the same time. A guy once had pain in his belly and the doc told him to lift his arms and a TV remote just fell out. He was so fat it got stuck between his wrinkles. I volunteer at an STI clinic, not a doctor, and we always ask people if there's a reason why they came to get tested. I have heard so so many misconceptions but one of the more uncomfortable ones was that a young lady said her boyfriend insisted he got chlamydia from sharing a towel at the gym and that she should get tested just in case. I kindly explained to her how chlamydia is transmitted and gave her some brochures to take home with her and share with her boyfriend to discuss. 
I'm not a doctor but a classmate was trying to convince the class that she had holes in her lungs. I mean, she's not wrong. It's really common for people to claim that they in fact have a fever despite not having a fever, because they are a low temperature person. Also, a woman claimed her uterus had wandered. I'm not a doc, but I'd order an ultrasound just to see where her uterus had wandered to. I wouldn't even disbelieve the patient to her face. Oh look, it came back. Dentist here, many patients try to find excuses for their very poor mouth hygiene, and many try to convince me that it was because of an accident, when it is obviously not. Not a doctor but I was in a very crowded emerg with my wife, waiting, nothing too serious, a giant dude in a mumu was approached by a doctor, the patient was a frequent flyer was my guess, doctor asked him what was going on, he begins with, I was diagnosed a lesbian. My landlord keeps me penniless, she comes into my place and takes my money. I'm taking estrogen but keep forgetting to take the pills. My daughter, she's in Buffalo, she comes to see me sometimes but she's busy. Six minutes later the doctor says okay, okay, what did you come to the hospital for, what is it you want? I hit my head and I need stronger pain medicine than Advil. The doctor walked off, I don't know if he got a script or not. Not a doctor but I'm 12 and was in the hospital cause I went into diabetic ketoacidosis, google it if you don't know what I'm talking about, and the one nurse said that since I have diabetes I can only drink like diet sodas and stuff that don't have sugar or carbs and my dad tried to tell her that aspartame, an artificial sweetener, causes leukemia lol. On the other hand. Have you ever had a pain or issue that seems so weird or hard to describe that the doctors look at you as if you are having a laugh or making it up? When I'm in pain, especially if I have had even a cocodamol, I can't describe things to make reasonable sense at all, and it always results in a yeah right look from the doctors, at least to start. Not a doctor, but worked in a hospital. I can't drink water it makes me gag. Really whiny, needy person came in constantly complaining and wanting someone to listen to her talk about every painful experience of her life. Her BF ditched her as soon as she was in a hospital gown and since she couldn't stand up for a while after the procedure, she kept insisting he had her coffee that she needed and we had to go searching for him. We offered alternatives, but water makes me gag. My best friend can't drink still water. She has PTSD from severe nausea and vomiting during pregnancy and it really does make her gag. I don't know how she survives. She drinks sparkling water and I guess that's enough. Not a doctor but this guy tried to lie for a prescription for anxiety meds. He told the doctor he had frequent urination to warrant a checkup. He ends up getting a full on prostate exam and gives a blood test. The guy faints upon being pricked with the needle. Passing out long enough for the doctor to clock out. The guy did not get a prescription for anxiety meds. Arjon Mulaney. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.